viewers, my name is Darlene Tinokoka and I welcome you to the Dell with Electrical YouTube channel. Today, we shall be discussing on a very important aspect of renewable energy, which is how to size your inverter batteries. It's very important. Inverter batteries, in fact, batteries are the most important component of inverter system because it's the battery that stores charges that gives power to your, that gives DC to your inverter, which is being converted to AC that is used to power your equipment. So if the battery is not adequately sized, then obviously your output requirement will just be within a short period of time and your battery will go down. So that is why today we shall be talking on the sizing of your battery. And now basically you know that all inverter batteries are usually deep cycle batteries. These days, we are beginning to have the tubular type and we are beginning to have the lithium ion. But all this has a tendency of being charged and discharged within a cycle. So whenever a battery is charged, is used, that is discharged and is charged again, that has completed a cycle. So that's why the batteries are, deep cycle batteries are usually classified in cycles. So the number of cycles is going to use over a period of time will determine how good or the quality or the nature of that battery we are going to get. So for sizing of a battery, we are going to be looking at various factors that are required before a comprehensive calculation is to be carried out. So we'll go into the various factors and we'll analyze all the factors. The first factor we are going to be looking at today is the load capacity of the appliances to be powered. Now, the appliances that you need to power, you have to know what it is. So you need an electrical engineer or from our previous video, we talked about sizing of your load. So you have to know what wattage, if it's a fan, if it's a TV, if it's a refrigerator, all the load that the inverter system is supposed to carry, you're going to carry out the wattage. The, all your equipment in your building behind it has a nameplate and that nameplate will be able to tell you what is the power rating of that equipment. Like most laptops now, because most people, they require their laptop at, you might not see the rating on the system of, uh, behind on the system, but when you check the power pack, you see where the wattage is written. Some of them are 90, some of them are 100, some of them are 70. Then on your TV set behind, you can also see the wattage of that TV. So you calculate all the equipment that you want to power and write them down. That is going to tell you the load capacity that the inverter needs to carry. So when you have gotten that load capacity, you now move to your second factor. The second point we are going to be talking about is the nominal voltage of the battery. This is very important because most times you are not going to be using just one battery. Considering your load or capacity of your, your considering your load, you're not going to be using one battery. So you are going to be connecting batteries either in parallel or in series. In our subsequent videos, we've talked about series and parallel connection. This is also applicable in this system. So if you have a charge controller that is, or if you have an inverter system that is 24 volt, obviously your charge controller should be 24 volt and your panels should be 24 volt. Your battery also too should be 24 volt. So you can see that when you have a nominal voltage of 12 volt battery and you have a 24 volt inverter system, what does that mean? Batteries connected in series will give an addition of voltage because we said it in our series connection cycle. Please, I will advise you if you don't understand the meaning of series or parallel, go to our, our previous videos where we we'll talk about series connection and parallel connection to understand how this connection is done. The way we did the connection on a cycle is also in the same way you're going to do a connection on your battery. Series connection anywhere, battery, panels, circuit is the same thing. So for a series connection, you are going to you see that the voltages are additive. But for a parallel connection, the voltages are similar. So, if you're using a 24 volt inverter system, that means you need two 12 volt batteries. And those 12 volt batteries will be connected in series. Because when you connect them in series, that means your voltages are additive. The 12 volts now, the output of those series connection will be 24 volts. So, the normal, your nominal voltage is very important. You have to equate it 
with your inverter, you have to equate it with your charge controller. The third point we are going to be talking about is the days of autonomy. That is the number of days you need your system to operate when there is no power produced, there is no um, public power supply, there is no there is total rainfall, and your your panels is not being charged. So, how many number of days do you think, since from your experience in your building where you have been staying, what is the number of days you have gone without power? Have you have you gone through the number of days for like two days and there is no public power? Or there are some instances that you have random rainfall that the rain is falling on a daily basis and there is no adequate sunlight from the solar panel to charge your batteries. So if you know the number of days of autonomy, then that will help you to charge the system. So these are the these are the three basic factors that I require. But under this, we have two additional factors that you also take into consideration, which are the depth of discharge and the battery loss. There are some factors that you put into consideration to ensure so to put into consideration to ensure that your battery is being used effectively. So the depth of discharge is is a factor that you normally have between 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. You put it into consideration so that whenever your battery is being discharged, at what particular level does you does it get to so that you don't have to run it down. So normally in my own calculation, I normally use 0 0.75. 0 0.75. So if you use 0 0.75, it's, it's left for you, the designer. So you, you'll be asked for the calculation has stated that you are going to use a value between 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. So if you're using 0 0.6, you are still okay. If you're using 0 0.8, you are still okay. But that is the value that shows that when can the battery be, at what level should the battery be used before it's being charged again? Then it's, the other factor is battery loss is a value between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 that's to show that every time you recharge the battery the life of that battery is being lost is being depreciated that's why most times when i see a lot of people say ah, i want to buy a fairly used battery i want to buy a second hand battery yes you don't know how many times that been charged the battery might look very new but you will see that like a service apartment or holiday apartment whereby people just come and stay a day and go you see that it's not usually used Maybe do except during summer period or during vacation period. But for a residential apartment where there are kids, that battery needs to be used over and over and over again. So it must have been charged and discharged, charged and discharged. Number of cycles must have increased. So fairly used battery is not usually advised because you will not know the number of cycles that it has taken place. So battery loss. Battery loss, you put in a value of like 0 0.8 or, or 0, is a value between 0 0.8 to 0 0.9. You add it to your calculation. And that is going to give you a value. So what we are saying is that if you want to calculate your battery size, the three main factors you have to consider is one, your load. What load do you want to power? If you have known the load you want to power, you have to know the nominal voltage of the battery. You have to know the dates of autonomy. Now we added two other factors to ensure that you have a standard calculation. You have the battery loss and you have the depth of discharge. So we'll go into a calculation and see how we are going to solve this and help you to do your own battery. So now we're going to have a calculation that is going to explain all what we have said about battery sizing and battery connection. Now the, the formula for battery capacity amp hour is battery capacity amp hour is equal to load capacity of appliances to be powered times total watt hours per day used by the appliances times days of autonomy all over depth of discharge times battery loss times nominal battery voltage. So let's assume an example. Let's say for a company that has the total capacity of appliances to be 24,900 watts. The total watt hour per day to be powered, that's the number of hours you want to power the equipment, is 10 hours. The days of autonomy, that's the number of days that's they are not expecting public power supply, they are not expecting sunlight, is one day. The depth of discharge to be used in this my calculation is 0 0.75. Remember I told you that your depth of discharge can be between 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. So in my calculation, I'll be using 0 0.75. Battery loss, 
we have a value between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9, but I'm going to be using 0 0.85. So you can decide in your own calculation to either use 0 0.8 or any value to 0 0.9. Then the nominal voltage of the battery to be used is 48 volts. Now, considering the capacity of my load, which is 24,900, I've decided to use 48 volts. That means my inverter system is going to be 48 volt inverter. My charging charge controller is going to be 48 volt, and my nominal battery output is going to also be 48 volt. So we can see we will see how we're going to arrive at that. So from our formula, battery amp hour, battery capacity amp hour is equal to our load capacity is 24,900. Our total watt hours per day used is 10. Our days of autonomy is one. Then our depth of discharge is 0 0.75, our battery loss is 0 0.85, our nominal battery voltage is 48. So from our, if we put this into our formula, we have 24,900 times 10 times 1, all over 0 0.75 times 0 0.85 times 48. This is equal to 20, 249,000 all over 30.6. If you divide this, you will get... 8137.25 amp hour. Now you see that to get a single battery that is 8137.25 amp hour in the market is not possible. So we have to see how we're going to connect batteries in series and par parallel to actualize this. So let's consider that we're going to use 250 amp hours battery, a deep cycle battery. So what how many number of 250? can give you 8137.25. So we divide 8137.25 over 250. That means we're going to be getting approximately 32 batteries. So you, you, if you are getting 32 batteries, so you have to think about uh, within yourself, how can you achieve, how can you connect 32 batteries to give you 48 volts, which is your nominal voltage? Now, we have said that Batteries connected in series gives you an additive voltage. So your nominal battery, this 250 amp hour, comes with 12 volts. So that means if you connect four batteries together, it will give you 32. I don't know if you, if you connect four batteries together at 12, 12, 12, 12, it will give you 48. That means if you have 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12, to give you 48. So we need four circuits to get 48 volts. So, but we have 32 batteries. That means if we connect eight batteries in parallel, connect under eight batteries in parallel, connect under eight batteries in parallel, connect under eight batteries in parallel, that means we have four, eight times eight times eight times four, that's 32. So in this case, we are going to connect eight batteries in parallel into four places then we'll connect those four in series to get your 48 volt so we're going to give you a, look at this your, your screen you will see this um the diagram of how the batteries are connected to see how you arrive at 48 volt so you are going to connect 32 batteries connect them if you, if you connect them in parallel they will have 12 volts you connect this second one in parallel it has 12 volts Connect this third one in parallel, which has 12 volt. Connect this fourth one in parallel, it has 12 volt. So then you connect individually in series. You connect them in series. You connect them in series. When you total it, the total voltage now, because you are connecting circuit one, circuit two, circuit three, circuit four in series, 12, 12, 12, 12 volt, that's 48 volt. So the actual voltage you are getting from this is 48 volt. So this is how you size your battery. I have to use this big circuit to explain how the circuit can be calculated. So if you feel that you, you have a lesser circuit or a bigger circuit, it's the same procedure. So ensure that your output is being connected accordingly. So you must understand what a series connection is and what a parallel connection is so that you'll be able to know what your output voltage is going to be. So I believe I've been able to educate you on how to size your battery and how to connect your battery to give you the output voltage requirement. If you feel this video has been very educated to you, kindly click on the subscription button to get notified whenever we post subsequent video. And also kindly share to your friends so as to get them educated 
on issues of batteries in an inverter system. Thank you very much.